welcome back to my YouTube channel. And this is your teacher, Teacher Da. Do not forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and share it to your friends. And now, we will have our new topic which is all about microorganisms. Microorganisms came from the two words, micro and organisms. Micro which means small things or minute things, and organisms which are the living things. So when the two words combine, we will have small living organisms. The small living organisms cannot be seen by our naked eye. So we need to use a microscope for us to see them because they are very tiny. And because of that, we need to study about them. And thanks for the invention of the microscope. And now, there are three major groups of microorganisms. Namely, we have the bacteria, we have the protist, and third one is fungi. Those three major groups of microorganisms differ from one to another. So, the first group of microorganisms is under Kingdom Monera. And under Kingdom Monera, there is what we call bacteria. Bacteria are prokaryotic cells because they do not have nuclear membrane. Their nucleus or what we call nucleoid is not in a nuclear membrane. So it lacks the nuclear membrane. That is why those DNA, the DNA of the bacteria are scattered in its cytoplasm. And bacteria can be categorized into three. There is what we call the cocci, which is the circular shape. We have the bacilli, the rod shape, and we have the spirilla, which is the spiral shape bacteria. And those bacteria are different from one to another. And take note, bacteria are not all bad. There are bad bacteria that can harm animals, plants, and humans like us. We can get sick and we can get disease from them. But not all bacteria are bad. There are some what we call good bacteria which are beneficial to animals, to humans, and to plants. And this helpful bacteria can help us, number one, for digesting of foods like that. And uh, some other bacteria can uh, use in a medical purposes, something like that. So those are benefits of the bacteria. And take note of this class. Bacteria can be found not an individual, but you can see them or you can find them as a cluster or as a group so, or in a colony. So when you see them, they are not just one, but they are in group. And at the same time, like what we have said, bacteria can be found everywhere. Kahit saan, you can find them. So, we will see bacteria that can live in the extreme environment. They can live in extreme heat. And this is what we call extremophiles. Okay? In, the, in those extreme heat, specific bacteria that can be found there is what we call thermophiles. Okay? And those bacteria that lives in extreme salty environment, they are what we call halo fires okay and the second group of microorganism is what we call kingdom protista in the kingdom protista or what we call protists these are the tiny living organisms that are considered as eukaryotic unicellular organism meaning to say one cell with nucleus they are now a living organism and they are divided into three there is what we call the plant-like protista or the algae and then we have the animal-like protista or the protosome ones and then we have the fungi-like protista which is what we call the slime molds. Let us first tackle about the algal protista. The algal protista or the plant-like protist are what we call the seaweeds. Okay, so usually Japanese foods and Japanese, they are fun to eat algae or seaweeds all the time. So those seaweeds are considered as algae. Okay, algae can also be a jelly. Okay, sila yung natin mga lumot sa dagat. Okay, then 
these are some example of this algal protists. Let's see. Okay. The second group of protists is what we call animal-like protists or what we call protozoans. This animal-like protists, they behave like animals like that. They need to eat other organisms or other for them to be able to survive. And these are examples of these protozoans. And the third group of protists is what we call the fungi-like or the fungus-like protists or what we call slime molds. So basically, they are like uh, what we call the combination of fungi and protists at the same time. Usually, you can see them in uh, wet areas like that, in some dark areas in the forest or in some areas of the streets like that that is wet. Okay? So that's all about protists. And take note, some of the protists are very helpful and some of them are very harmful. And here are some examples of algal protista. Algae or algal protista has different colors and those different colors of algae has its own name. And in addition to protista, the algal protista are what we call autotrophs. Meaning to say, those algae or seaweeds can make their own food like plants on land, right? While protozoans or animal-like protista are what we call heterotrophs. Meaning to say, they need to eat other living organisms for them to be able to survive. And number three, the last group is what we call fungi. Have you heard about this? Sounds familiar, right? Because this fungi can be microscopic and macroscopic. But we are going to tackle about the microscopic one. Because the macroscopic or the big fungi is what we call mushroom. Have you seen a mushroom? Yes. Very good. This is an example of a mushroom. Okay? A mushroom is a fungi. But remember that fungi are also eukaryotic. They can be unicellular and they can be multicellular organisms. Those multicellular are the mushrooms and the unicellulars are the microscopic ones. And remember, fungi are saprophytes. Saprophytes meaning to say they feed on decaying matter. So, if you can see a decaying uh, wood, you can see there a mushroom, okay? You, you can see a decaying animals and other stuff like that. You can see fungi, okay? Because they feed on those dead matters. Fungi can be helpful, but there are also fungi that can be harmful to humans. And not only to humans, but also to animals and plants. And these are some examples of the fungi. Okay, an example of microscopic fungi is yeast. Yeast, or in Tagalog, we call it levidura. Usually, we use yeast for leavening of bread, meaning to say yung pampaalsa, so that the bread can uh, grow. Not totally grow, but the bread expand. Okay? Because of the presence of yeast. And yeast also uses in winemaking, in the process of fermentation. So, this is eat those sugars in uh, some of the fruit juices and turn it into alcohol. And those are the benefits of the fungi. But some fungi can harm us like what we have, the hadhad, alipunga, and even our dandruff like that. And if you have uh, some singaw, okay, in your mouth, those are causes or cause by fungi. So, next time, be careful and let us learn and let us all study all about this microorganism so that next time, we know what to do and we will always be protect ourselves and these microorganisms 
can reproduce asexually. Meaning to say, no sex cells are included for them to reproduce. For example, bacteria can reproduce by binary fission. They just divided into two. Same as with the protista. And same with the fungi, they reproduce asexually with the presence of spores. Okay? Remember that fungi doesn't have any true roots, true leaves, true stem. And the study of fungi is mycology. The study of bacteria is bacteriology. Okay?